Hi, folks. Oh, David, you're a beano is already on. David, on early. Hey, right. everybody who's joining. Good to see everybody. Grab some coffee. Um, hell, at this point, get it here. I don't care what time it is. <laughs> I think we're. <laughs> I think I think we've moved beyond. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's okay. Get something to drink, um, and we will start in a little bit. We'll get going. I've got my nice Colombian roast. I'm very happy this morning. And as you're joining, smack the like button. Boys, smack the like button or the clap button or the heart. The curious one is a cute one. I like that one. I, I like to bang that one around a couple times. And we will get going in just a minute. I need a, I need a better gonna, background. I, I like your clock. That's cool. You like that? I decorated yeah. the office myself. For everyone who's curious, yes, I am the one who decorated this office. This is Ikea behind me. Isn't that nice? Nice. So you can't see yeah. it all. Oh, my God. I love this. I love LinkedIn because you never know what you're going to get. So I look like I have, I don't know, <laughs> like, I need a, like I need to go to a spa. Um, and, and, and my, uh, better. Hey, folks. My it doubles as a uh, gym that never gets used, and I was not about to try and drag that uh, unused uh, treadmill out from behind me. So that's what you get. Yeah, very nice. I uh, I made a so our gym is closed, obviously up front. Uh, my daughter and I are pretty religious about working out, or she forces me. Um, so I've made a gym in the garage. I hung a big mirror up. Uh, the problem is trying to buy weights right now is next to impossible. So I went yeah. to Walmart at like midnight last night and got the last 20 pound weight they had. So now I have two 20 pound weights. Uh, nice. So I'm very impressed with myself. Yes. I'm good at this. Hey, everybody. Uh, uh, paper and weights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. We got folks from all over the place. Got some folks from New York. Hello, David, Gary, you know, um, folks from Atlanta. Hello, Veronica, um, Minneapolis. All right. Um, did you get snow in Minneapolis? So the guy who's not from Minneapolis, let me know. I know Chicago, I think, got snow, which is just stupid. That's just mean at this point, um, I think. It's just not fair. Everybody, grab your coffee. We're going to start in a minute. Click the like button. Share this. Push it out there. Um, as usual, if you've got questions, throw them in the comments. We will get to the questions, I promise you. Um, I'm loving my video. At some point, we're just going to put a picture of me up. Um, Working with Tobias, our producer, to figure out how we can make the mouth move when I talk. It's just a static picture. Um, again, I just blame the, the Wi-Fi in Florida, as I always do. All right. With that, I'm trying to stay somewhat on time. Let's get started. Um, happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to the 11th episode of FinTech Insider, the Breakfast Show US. The show from folks at 11 FS. We're bringing you insights into FinTech and the banking landscape. I'm Sam Ball. I'm the Managing Director for 11 FS for North America. Um, I'm down in Jacksonville, Florida, where we have a wonderful storm coming through that tore through the U.S. Um, over the past couple of days. Now it's hitting Florida, so it makes it so much fun. Do let us know where you're watching from. Hit it in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear from the viewers. I do, our, I do my best to get to every single question that's asked, either during the show or after. And by the way, and I think this is an important point, all of these shows, every morning show we've done, whether it's in the U.K. that David Burr has done or U.S. shows, we are loading them up on the 11FS YouTube page. So we have a whole playlist set for you. So if you want to go back, there's something that you heard, you want to share it with somebody, you can do it there. So today, very happy to be joined by Dave Berger. He's the co-founder and CEO at QNexus, the one-click lending platform for banks and credit unions. You just got a sound bite for me, Dave. Uh, today's like show, that. we're going to talk about, yeah, I'm here for you. Today, we're going to talk about what QNexus is, their focus, and a lot on consumer lending industry and what's going on. Um, so the the very first question I always ask is, where are you in the world right now? Um, I am in somewhat sunny, or the sun's coming up right now, uh, Northern California, about an hour north of San Francisco in a little town called Santa Rosa. Oh, God. so he wins right now. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I love that part of the world. Oh, my God. Yeah, the only thing nice. that would make it better if you had a glass of, like, red wine and you were drinking it. Uh, you know what? It's... Give me an hour. You know, it's it's still seven thirty a.m. here. So. <laughs> hey, again, uh, that, that's your problem, not mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I love absolutely love that part of the world. Uh, so before we jump in around uh, what and and who QNexus is, Dave, let's talk a little bit about you. What was your background prior to um, founding this company? Uh, 
Oh, there's your picture, static picture. Um, before starting this company, well, I uh, got my career started at a credit union here in Santa Rosa, uh, fairly large credit union, right out of college uh, in the marketing department. Spent some time in there learning about the business. Uh, really became uh, an advocate for the credit union movement. Really believed in that. That's where I met my co-founders. So I spent a, about the first decade of my career there, and then I. Uh, you know, left to start the first go around of what would eventually become QNexus. That was actually in 2007. Bad time to start a Ooh, lending auto nice. and fintech. Yeah. So once the bottom fell out there, I uh, I needed a day job. So I went to work at a winery. Actually, I spent uh, seven years at a winery, local winery, doing marketing and compliance uh, and DTC type uh, sales. It was uh, interesting, and I I worked on the business at night and. When the market turned around and was able to save up some money, we built the product, and here we are. I need to introduce you to uh, the president of my old consulting firm, uh, CG. He, um, when CG sold to NTT, he got a very nice patch, obviously, and he spent six months as an intern at a winery in uh, in Napa Valley. You gotta love it. Yeah, good That's for him. Great lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. So, so to go from working on a winery to starting up. A, uh, a company like you, Nexus, one thing I do love is you came out of the industry. So you understand credit unions, you work there and everything else. So talk to me about the idea that sparked you, Nexus, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, I'll try and give you the short story I, or the medium yeah. story. Uh, it really, it was all about efficiency and better use of our budget. Um, for years, I was running promotions at the credit union for loan acquisition, uh, pre-approvals. You know, we send you a piece of mail, tell you you're pre-approved for a credit card or a, or a vehicle or a home equity loan. And it was one at a time and it was all paper-based and it was pretty inefficient. Uh, there's always an ROI with those. You know, that's why you, yeah. you always have them in your mailbox. But uh, it took a lot of effort, uh, um, a lot of money and, uh, and a lot of time. So what we came up with was this concept where we thought, what if we took a holistic view of, of each each account holder, what you know, what is their relationship with the institution? What's their uh, financial relationship with other institutions? We take all that data and we learn about them. And instead of presenting them with one-off offers that are sort of seasonal, uh, we present them with a menu of options that are personalized to their financial profile. And the idea there is uh, you're you're perpetually approved, and um, and that was sort of the genesis for it. And and uh, it definitely evolved from there. Uh, as the the economy tanked in 2008 and we were going through that that downturn, uh, you saw mobile technologies really take off across every other industry, right? And uh, huge brands toppled in the wake of this new, you know, sort of uh, consumer expectation around uh, on-demand services and mo mobility and things like that. And what we realized coming out of that was that we'd hit on a formula that really worked um, to serve that mindset to to provide that as you said once uh sam actually uh you you said that our our uh, solution what was it um is the holy grail for consumers thank you for that that oh, by the way mm -hmm. and that uh because it, it, it I'm paraphrasing here to some extent but uh it provides instant gratification and that's really what it's about it's about getting as close to that amazon sort of one click experience as you can using the data to inform the system about what somebody is already approved for. So they never have to fill out a loan application. And that's that's the, the kind of the gist of it. I saw the very first time, um, Brad Lehmer actually, uh, I think introduced us way back when. Yeah. And I think I was, I think we met in Seattle or San Francisco at a bank innovation conference where you guys were presenting. And uh, oh, yeah. it had that guy who had like, that handlebar mustache. I can't remember his name. Yeah, it's Craig. Um, yeah. Remember? Craig, yeah, hey. Oh, Craig, 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 Craig. <laughs> A great mustache, just stunning. Um, but I remember, you know, when, you, when you've been in the industry a long time and you're sitting there and everybody's doing their pitches and their demos, you know, you can get rather jaded, right? You immediately look for, all right, you know, that's cute. You know, what's wrong with it? You know, you, you just get bored. I remember you guys walked me through the demo and with like 10 seconds, I went, oh my God, this is perfect. This is, <laughs> this product makes sense. Um, because as a user, 
uh, so me as a customer, right? Say I'm logging into my community bank or my credit union or, or whatever. Um, as I'm logging in, those I'm getting I'm getting the potential for loan offerings, but that makes sense to me, right? Like I want to go look. Like right now, I'm desperate to buy a boat. I'm so damn bored. I got um, one on the to you if you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, I just know how I'd get it from Northern California to Florida. But you know that idea of knowing that I've been out looking, you know, that 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 piques my interest. Already knowing, I'm already approved basically for this loan. It's everything about that concept makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. If you don't mind, kind of walk me through that journey, right? So from the user logging in for one of your customers, how does this work? Yeah, I mean, really, it's uh, the basis is uh, yeah, credit worthy consumers. They know they're credit worthy, right? And most people these days, yeah. they know their credit score within you know a certain degree, right? I know I. I have a yeah. pretty decent credit score, so I know I can shop around for a rate elsewhere, apply anywhere, and pr probably get approved. But the problem with that is a few things. It's one, I don't know how much I'll get approved for. I don't know what rate I'll ultimately get, even though you know it, they, you show the teaser rate, but is that really the rate I'm going to get? There's re really a lot of, there's like a veil in front of that whole process. And uh, so we eliminate that by you know keeping people perpetually approved for all the products that the institution offers. We do that through an ongoing data analysis. And what ultimately happens is that the user experience is, is, is very simple. Like you said, you log in or to your online banking or your mobile banking app, and we integrate in the call center and the branch as well. It's all channels, but you know we're kind of known for that digital experience. So you log in the mobile, you're checking your checking account balance. You can see that. And then by the way, right there next to it is you, know, you have $40,000 available for an auto loan. You have Ten thousand dollars available for a personal loan or consolidation loan, or maybe you have a, an auto loan on the books with another lender. Uh, we can we can determine what that payment is. We can see what the, um, the loan amount is, and we can present a refinance offer. And because they're all one hundred percent approved, we're we're doing the decisioning on an ongoing basis. This is not a uh, pre qualification or some sort of invitation to apply. This is a firm offer of credit, and because of that they can activate that loan. They go through a few steps, it's less than 10 seconds. They can uh, read about the loan, they can indicate how much of their available credit do they need. And then when they click to activate that loan, we integrate with the um, origination system behind the scenes to you know, begin the processing of that loan. For a certain loan type, we'll even push it all the way through zero touch. Um, so it's very efficient for the consumer. They you take out that wondering, that that guesswork of will I be approved or for how much, and uh, you deliver the loan very, very quickly. Uh, and then in the back office, it makes it a lot more efficient when your queue, your origination queue is lining up with already approved loan applications that are fully completed exactly. because we have the data to do that and they can process them very, very fast. Uh, so we have, you know, we see clients really seeing a lot of efficiency out of the, the platform on the back end, which was almost a uh, secondary to us when we started was really the focus on the consumer experience, you know, what's happening on that app. But, you know, now we've, we've managed to go end to end. And you can imagine that in an environment like right now, that's very useful. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, I know you're, I know that your customers, so the banks, credit unions and everyone else to work with, um, right now that reallocation of resources to focus on the small business loans and uh the payroll protection uh, uh yep. program and everything else is just that's a stress moment right now that we're living through and by the way for folks in europe um i'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to the smaller banks the community banks the credit unions and everyone else um they took a huge undertaking with very small teams and have achieved a ridiculous amount of success um, um, with this, right, with it, through a very difficult time, um, which is, you know, the reality is I think it's 40 percent of uh, loans that are generated in the U.S. for small businesses come from that group I just mentioned, right? Um, you know, it's one thing for Bank of America to allocate resources to roll out, you know, a website or a mobile app for this program when they have literally tens of thousands of engineers. It's another one when you only have 50 employees across the piece. So, Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and make that shout out. So, but for those of us that uh, are familiar with QNAXIS, um, I'll go ahead and say this. 
we've all more or less fallen in love with the solution because it meets what we talk about at 11FS, you know, real time contextual, you know, data engagement in the moment that makes sense. I love how David Garabino in the comments just said this loans at the zero moment of truth. <laughs> nice one. I <laughs> there you like go, that. David. Yeah, there you go. There's another tagline for you. Um, <laughs> good question that came up. Um, uh, how do you plug into the user's financial picture? So at a credit union level across a financial institution for a user? Good question. Um, so I assume we're talking about the data that we use. Yeah. Uh, yep. And that really comes from multiple sources. Uh, the solutions taking data from the core system. So uh, definitely a lot of useful data already resident at the FI and their core system. So we're going to yeah. take in a full data feed from that. Our so our software, what it does at the outset is it, it takes that that core feed and it builds a, a profile of each individual and their account relationships various account relationships across the entire you know spectrum of that that institution so um in many cases uh, somebody might have multiple accounts you know multiple right. sort of instances of the, that individual um especially across a large you know organization i uh, one of some of the larger uh, uh banks or large credit unions we serve mm -hmm. um some of them can be somewhat siloed in in their products yeah. so we we combine all that the system is able to combine that and then we take third-party data um always from the credit bureau and we work with uh, here in the states we work with all three in fact um uh we will be announcing a, a strategic partnership on on monday with uh, transunion which we're very excited about oh, good you, for you. You, heard, you heard it here first on there 11 fx yep. <laughs> um yeah. But uh, we work with all three and we take that data and, and there's a lot of interesting data in there. Um, we're not doing it in any sort of creepy way, right? It's uh, there's, there's no uh, social stocking or anything going on. It's, it's very much, you know, uh, the data that you typically use for uh, uh, understanding somebody's credit worthiness, but it's also trade line data uh, from, from other lenders, which gives us a holistic view of somebody's financial you know, profile and well-being. Um, who they are yeah. and that's how we can tailor and decision on relevant offers. Uh, Dan's asked a good question from London. Um, uh, so David, what do you think about Intuit and Square entering the PPP disbursement program? And I, we should add in PayPal, if I remember right, and several others. Has big tech finally arrived into banking as a service? Oof. Oh boy. Uh, Opinion. Honestly, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, I, I would, say that I'm probably not the most qualified to talk about um, that area of fintech but what I can't say is I, I see a lot of a lot of players out there scrambling to create yeah. solutions to what is a very obvious problem right now um, and you know that kind of goes not to go turn it back to Qnexus but sure. um, you know the the, the PPP um, application process is a nightmare right and there are people who are having a really hard time figuring that out and so there's and there's some very bright minds in these fintechs that have um, you know grown fairly rapidly. So anybody who who comes up with an idea that's going to make that simpler, you know, I just hope that it's able to get out there and get in the hands of the people that need it. Um, you know, it, and that speaks kind of volumes about the application process as a whole. Where an application is not necessary, why put up that roadblock? Um, I think in the case of PPP, it's 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 such a basic loan application. There's very little there, um, but processing the volumes of them that are coming through, yeah. or finding ways to automate as much of the the post application process, or just standing up a stable enough environment that somebody can get into it is or you know start their application. It's 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 a mess, or it has been for the last few weeks. I I hope some yeah. of these guys solve for it. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, it's it's one of those. I've used this analogy a couple times, but we're we're fi we're flying a plane that's on fire, trying to retrofit it, rebuild it, and still do you know drink service right now. Um, that's just the reality of the situation, um, not only here in the U.S. but but across the globe. I'm curious for you, um, what do you, how are you seeing? Um, uh, I don't want to say. Um, uh, how, how are you seeing the take up of the offerings that you're having right now? Because you know we've seen all kind of metrics around consumer behavior right now, where spend is going. You know, are, are yeah. you seeing, especially as we're stuck at home? You know, uh, for those of us, you know, how, what what are you seeing as far as volumes and consumer behavior? 
Um, that's an, that's really an interesting question because it's kind of all over the board, right? Um, I'm it's seeing, yeah. you know, and, and it really doesn't, it's not with the size of the institution or, you know, anything having to do with geography that I can tell, but, um, we're seeing a large, uh, surge toward, you know, liquidity. So, uh, people are taking yeah. out personal loans. They're taking out emergency relief loans, which is a program that, you know, many community institutions are offering these super, uh, low rate, sometimes 0% short term loans um, yeah. that are you know not predatory in the way that you know other people might try and access money in times of desperation. Um, I think uh, refis are going to come up really fast and we're going to see a surge in, in refinancing of, of vehicles uh, again to reduce Definitely. monthly you know, expenses and things like that. But we've seen we've seen some of our lenders really double down on on trying to get these loans in the hands of people right now, despite the risks, despite the, the what's happening in the economy. And we've seen others really pull back. Um, so there, I think there's a mindset you know, at each um, lender that's, you know, it goes down to that. Maybe it's the board level or, or just their yeah. overall appetite for risk. But um, yeah, it, it's mainly those, those small dollar amount loans, auto loans, uh, purchase loans have really de declined. Uh, and I think we're going to obviously, you know, see that, uh, you know, perpetuate for, for at least several months, but it's the refis, the home equities, uh, credit cards, uh, consolidation loans, things like that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, it's, um, you know, I know that like, um, folks that are refinancing their mortgage like me, um, because of the rates that are out there. But, um, I think what's going to be interesting is the long-term effect of, you know, but in the U.S., one third of uh, folks that rent, um, you know, where they live, didn't make the rent payment in April, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing folks that, you know, what's the impact going to be on on mortgage loans? We've seen, you know, the news from, you know, yesterday with Chase and others, you know, that the the losses they're anticipating and setting the capital aside for that. I mean, that's reality. It's, you know, yeah. that's that's what we're seeing, and it's. How this plays out over the next, you know, few months, um, you know, and into Q3, it, it is hard. It, you know, we don't have a playbook necessarily for this. This isn't 2008. Um, yeah. This is this is incredibly unique. You know, so so how you yeah. manage through this? You know, I mean, how do you think the lending industry is going to change um, coming out of this? I mean, I, I think it's uh, been a wake up call for you know us as as an industry around. You know the yeah. need for best in class digital solutions you know remote delivery yeah. of products and services uh branches are closed you know uh, call centers are t totally overwhelmed uh you can't get yeah. through to anyone but people still have needs you know and and the lenders still want to lend you know many of them do so i think what's going to happen is we're going to see a you know another surge like we did kind of in the 2013 2014 first wave of yeah. of fintech post uh, crisis fintech we're going to see another surge toward um you know delivering an even better enhanced digital banking experience and i hope that's the silver lining of this all is that I, there's you know, we we really refine those tools we rely on automation we rely more on data and we really tailor and craft engagement engaging experiences on the digital channel so that people can can access self serve but still yeah, there's still some differentiation available to the institutions for, you know, branding and things like that. So, um, you know, that's one thing we've noticed a lot of right now is our, our clients are, are seeing a, a ton of the self-serve channels being leveraged um, in, you know, it, because the branches are closed. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, this, <laughs> the importance of digital, right? Um, and and the changing of business models, I think, is going to be something we'll see a hell of a lot faster than we did coming out of 2008. You know, just like you said, you know, coming coming out of the market crash in 2008, um, it, it took about two, two or three years before we really saw just a massive influx of solutions and where we kind of came up with the term fintech. That's really where it landed coming out of that. Um, I think we're actually much better positioned now to get, um, and, and the world has changed, right? I mean, obviously that the infrastructure underlying a lot of this has changed and yet it has it, right? The dependency on COBOL, yeah. you and I could both just 
pound our head up against the wall when it comes to that. Um, for yeah. for uh, some of the viewers in the UK, for example, or in Europe or Africa, we get folks from all over the world tuning into this, by the way, Dave. Um, if, for example, in New Jersey, the governor made a specific call out for COBOL programmers because the you know to file for unemployment, the whole system was written on COBOL and it was falling over. We had the same thing here in Florida, right? Um, the the social safety nets, such as applying for unemployment, and and um, are are written in a incredibly old programming language where we don't have enough resources that can work on those. So I think solutions and products like QNexus, right, that that are built really in, in best in class technology stacks um, that and make this easier to to get into the hands of your customers on a hell of a lot faster. Is, uh, is something that we'll see. I love the concept of, you keep talking about efficiency, which is so needed right now, especially like we said, business models is changing. We're seeing you know, um, the impact of branches with not being able to work their folks working remote. Um, but I think you touched on a couple of key things that you have to have. You need the efficiency side of it, and it also has to be relevant, right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it's fine if it's efficient as well, but if no one's using it, it doesn't mean anything. So I think for a product of what you have, it's it's easy to see. I wanted to ask you about your experience, by the way. Um, how many times have you guys been named like best in class or won something at like Finovate? Go ahead and brag. Come on. <laughs> have, You're allowed. Brag. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't no, know. Come I mean, on. We, we, <laughs> we take a Go few uh, awards a year. I think we're we're on. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't pretend that we're the most decorated, but I, I do have a nice uh, table full of Lucite uh, trophies at the office. And, <laughs> yeah, and, it, and we just look at them as if Lucite. Look, if Lucite could pay the the rent, you know, we would be we would be stoked. But amen. No, it's not. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> testament to the concept of what we're doing, right? Every time we we take an award home, it's just reinforcing that we're on the right track. And um, and that it, it's inspiring to us internally as a team because we're we're heads down all day long trying to yeah. trying to you know build the next features and do the next thing and sometimes it's hard to look behind you and realize how far you've come or celebrate the fact that your solution is having a real impact you know across the country and people are hands on with your technology you know every second of the day I mean these days we're yeah. doing. You know, 10, 15 million in loans every single day uh, through the platform. Um, some days, quite a bit more, and that is mind-boggling to me because you know when I met you in Seattle those years ago, I had no idea. You know, I, maybe I did, maybe I had a you know a dream, but to see that you know come to fruition and to look at that case full of lucite is uh, you know it's humbling, but it's also uh, some some bit of pride there for sure <laughs> so for those that aren't familiar with innovate you get i think seven minutes on stage to demo live demo no no powerpoint presentation supposedly uh live demo your product and walk people through it because the the emphasis there and back in the early days of innovate is you know there's no bs this works or it doesn't it can bail on stage or it doesn't but also how quickly the audience can understand this and the audience is full of bankers and credit unions and vcs and everything else so that'll tell you um again like i said in about 10 15 seconds i was like okay you don't even have to show anything else i get it a uh, good question uh that came up this gets back on the underlying data so for your customers um when they give you access do they give you access to their entire customer data set or do they give you a list of qualified customers that they send to you for further validation it's the whole data set um yeah Which is the right we, answer we need to yeah I mean, we can't uh, what happens when you when anybody tries to um, kind of pre-filter that data is inevitably they leave a whole bunch of stuff out. Um, we don't, you know, the system wants to look at everything. It, it's, you know, the software, the automation is qualified to to drill that down on its own. So we take it all, you know, all the data goes in and uh, anything useful is kept and the rest is purged out. How long is uh, an impl implementation cycle for you guys, by the way? Say, say I'm um, well, a community that come on board. I'm sure it varies, yeah. but it does vary. It varies on the systems they use. Typically, it's about yeah. 90 to 120 days. Um, right now, we're offering for COVID relief because our product is being being used um, quite a bit for relief efforts around 
you know, relief loans or skip payment oh. programs. And it's not all loans, by the way. We do other pro products as well, I mean, insurance products and uh, um, deposits, everything, you know. But um, the, you know, the, right now for specific to relief programs, we can do it in 48 hours. And we've partnered with some great companies, uh, Meridian Link, uh, NCR, TransUnion, uh, wow. CUNY Mutual Group, uh, Frost Financial. All these guys have, we've pulled resources together and we're offering a 48 or a 72 hour deployment um, that, that can get these lenders up and running with you know, a select number of, of product types, but the ones that their their customers and their members need right now. And so uh, we're trying to see if there's there are things that we can do to help the people who, you know, to help our, really to help our clients help their customers. Uh, and, and we're, we're happy to do that. You know, it, yeah. it'll you know, kind of pay it forward and it'll come back to you someday. <laughs> yeah. I will flat out say, and I'm going to speak for every banker that's watching this right now. So, you know, Sharon Lee at first bank and, and Denver, uh, Corey LeBlanc, of course is on, um, uh, and others, the, the concept of me being able to implement a solution in 48 hours or 72 hours, even if it's just <laughs> being able to change the text on my website as a content management tool. <laughs> is enormous we all know that right i mean it's that, that type of turnaround that that's what i love seeing coming out of the silver lining of events like we're going through right now right is the the fintech and banking and big tech communities coming together to get solutions in the hands that will address the real needs um for the consumers i mean that's that drives everything right i mean that's, that's absolutely it. yeah it's really heartening to see people step up in in these times like this and every once in a while it takes a crisis for people to pull back together and to you know rise up to to something like this and it yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot going on out there a lot of good that that's being you know seen through all the the, the thick fog of negativity right now which is you know it, we're in a sad yeah. place but we'll get through it so never give shout outs to uh something that's competing with what you're doing but i'm gonna go ahead and do it folks if you look at the comments amanda moore who's come on this a million times an mba candidate working in the innovation space uh, just let me know that on YouTube right now, there's a panel going on that just started with panelists from PayPal, Stripe, and Plaid talking about what's happening in this space. Um, as soon as I wrap this up, I'm popping on there. So the link's there. Highly recommend folks take a look at it. And unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, it flies by. It's amazing, David, how this goes. Um, so folks, you don't know this, but um, uh, Dave is wearing Vans right now because he's that kind of guy just like me. Hey, Dave, except I'm barefoot right now. Uh, but so uh, where can folks actually find out more about QNexus, about you, and what your van collection looks like? Uh, <laughs> where can they find that? I, I, I yeah, missed, uh, uh, yeah, at our go, go to our website, QNexus.com. Yeah. Join us on LinkedIn. We're, we're a lot of things, uh, content right now on there that we're pushing out. But uh, if you're interested in our relief loan program, we'd love to help you out. Um, and you know, we're here, we're open, and we're we're serving yeah you know, everyone as if uh, none of this is going on. Hundred percent remote, but hundred percent efficient. Send me a link on that on the on the reef on the um relief side of that. If you will, send me a link. Eleven FS, yeah. we'll push that out. I think that is fantastic. Absolutely. All right, folks. For me, Sam Mall. I mean, you know where to find me. Eleven FS. Tomorrow, we're joined by Erica Lucas. She's the co-founder of Stitch Crew, an accelerator out of Oklahoma city of all places and man i can't wait to talk to her let us know if you think of someone you'd like us to have on the show and everybody thanks for the comments thanks for tuning in and make sure you share this with with other folks that you know we really appreciate you always tuning in thanks a lot